Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi 400 or your Raspberry Pi 4 into the ultimate Amiga setup using an operating system called PyMiga. Now, to tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure where this originated from. I've been doing some research and I can't find the original creator of PyMiga, but I do know that the version here that works with the Raspberry Pi 400 is by Chris Edwards over here on YouTube, and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description so you can check it out. But this is absolutely amazing. As you can see here, we're actually using Workbench right out of the box. I mean, as soon as you boot up, it boots into Workbench, and we have everything we need here. We got our music players, our video players. There's actually some emulators built in here. We can start up WHD Load Games. And basically what we have here is a full Amiga operating system running on the Raspberry Pi 400. Like I said, this also works for the Raspberry Pi 4, but I think it's a little neater to install this on the Raspberry Pi 400, given the form factor of the 400. And in the past, I've actually done tutorials showing you how to set up Workbench on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4, and even on the Mr. FPGA. But to tell you the truth, I've actually had a better time using it on the Raspberry Pi 400, given that everything's already set up out of the box, and you don't need to jump through hoops to get this up and running on your Raspberry Pi. So if you want to at least test this out, we're going to go ahead and get started. But first up, there's a few things you're going to need. Obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 400 or a Raspberry Pi 4. All the accessories to get it up and running, like a power supply, HDMI cable, and a keyboard and mouse if you're using a Raspberry Pi 4. And you'll also need at least a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. I would recommend a 64. This image may fit on a 32, but after we extract it, we'll have some extra room if we do a 64 gigabyte card. All right, so let's go ahead and get PyMiga installed. Now, before we get started here, you will need at least a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. I'm using an inexpensive silicon power card that I picked up on Amazon and a cheaper USB 3.0 to micro SD card reader. It's already inserted in the PC and it's ready to be flashed. So first thing we're gonna do is head over to Chris Edwards YouTube channel. I'll leave a link for this in the description. Make sure you subscribe. He's got some awesome stuff over here. And we want to hit up his video for PyMiga 1.4. This will probably change in the future. So look for an updated version on his main page here, on his channel page. We're just going to go down here. We're going to download it. Now this is a torrent. So we need to download. And you will need a torrent client like BitTorrent. That's what I use. I'm just going to go ahead and open file. It's automatically going to open up here. And it's 14.7 gigabytes. Now that's zipped. This will take some time to download depending on your internet speed, so just give it some time. While that's downloading, we're going to go ahead and grab an application that will allow us to flash that image to a micro SD card. There's several available. I used to use Etcher a lot, but I've started using the Raspberry Pi OS imager, and uh, it works great here. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. We'll grab the Windows version because I'm using a Windows 10 machine. We're going to install this. And we can actually run it now if you want to. I'm going to minimize this. And I've already got the image downloaded here on my desktop in a folder called Amiga. Like I said, it comes zipped. When you extract it using WinRAR or 7-zip, you'll get a folder that looks like this. And inside of here, you're going to get a readme. Make sure you read through it and the image itself. This is 1.4, but it will change in the future. It will go up from here. I'm sure it will because he's done some awesome work on this and I'm sure there's a couple updates here and there that need to be done. So we've got that on our desktop. Now we need to flash our micro SD card. So from within the Raspberry Pi imager, we're gonna choose OS. We're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and use custom. From here, we need to navigate to where we extracted the PyMiga image to. Mine's on my desktop, so I'm going to navigate over here to desktop. It's in a folder called Amiga, Py image, and we want that .image file, or the disk image file. We're just going to double click. Next up, let's choose our SD card. Like I said, I'm using a 64 gigabyte card, and we're going to write the image to the card. Give this some time to finish up. It could take a little while because we're flashing close to 30 gigs to a micro SD card. All right, so now that we're flashed, we're just gonna click continue. We'll close this down. There's one last step we need to do. This does not contain any Amiga ROMs, and in order for this to boot up properly, you will need the A1200 3.1 Kickstart ROM. Do some searching or rip it from your own Amiga. Now, inside of the folder that we extracted, Pi Image, we have a README file, and he tells us that we need to rename that Kickstart ROM, that 3.1 Kickstart ROM, to kick 31A1200 ROM. So I'm just going to copy this right here. 
and I have my kick ROM right on my desktop. Right click. I'm just going to rename it. Now we have it renamed. We're going to open up our file manager and that SD card we just flashed will now have a partition called kick. We just need to place this right in there after we rename it. And that's it. So now we have everything ready to go. We can remove the SD card from the PC and move back over to the Raspberry Pi 400. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing started up. Got my HDMI plugged in. I'm going to insert that card we just flashed with Pi Mega and then plug my power in. Give it a little time to boot up, and I'd say this is the best part because we don't have to do any further configuration. I mean, it's going to boot right up into Workbench, and we'll be good to go. And after that little boot up animation and sound, it should bring us right into Workbench. And you can start using it from here. So what I'm going to do is actually plug this into my game capture so we can get a closer look at this screen. All right, just give you a closer look here. Like you saw, we have our system folder over here. We got our utilities, tools. Go ahead and open up a calculator. Everything's pretty smooth. Every once in a while, I do notice a little bit of a hang up. Uh, open up Eagle Player, our music player. Got this nice visualizer here. Everything looks great. Um, I just love the way this is set up. Everything you need is already set up in here. We'll go with the other music player here. Definitely take some time to get used to if you've never messed around with an Amiga. And unfortunately, I've actually never had the chance to mess around with a real Amiga. It's always been emulation. And this works really, really good. Like I said, you can start up your WHD load games. Uh, we do have a few freeware games ready to go. Let's just go with Duke Nukem. Give it a sec to load everything up. And there we have it. So yeah, I mean, even Duke Nukem right here. And I definitely need to get in here and figure out how to turn the sensitivity down on this mouse. Uh, it's a bit fast, but it is playable if you just take it easy. Frame rate's not bad at all. And I mean, overall, this does run well on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4, but to see it running here is just pretty cool. So yeah, it's a really cool operating system to mess around with on your Raspberry Pi. And if you've ever wanted to get into the Amiga, I think this is a nice cheap way to do it. You could go with that Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model. And uh, with something like this, you're already set up with Workbench and you have everything you need. I'm personally a big fan of it and I definitely recommend trying it out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out Chris Edwards' YouTube channel. And like always, thanks for watching.